Hey guys, so today is June 23rd of 2024 and I owe you an apology because I did not do a video yesterday. I actually didn't even get out of my pajamas. I was in my pajamas all day yesterday, didn't shower, didn't even go outside, did I? I didn't even go outside. Um, I was working on a project, so I was actually sitting in front of my computer the entire day. Um, well, not the entire day, because I think at one point I took my computer upstairs, right? Yeah, but you were still inside. Hadid is over there. And we just got back from church, and he was telling me, we were talking about today's message, and it was really good. And so I said, hey, I haven't recorded today's video yet. I should let you do the talking because it was such a good message. It was, talk about, it was talking about being grateful and thankfulness for even the small things. The things, the small things to the big things, but also the things that we don't even think about um, because we take it for granted. So I'm gonna bring the camera over to Hadid. <coughs> there we go. Uh -oh. Hello. There we go. Sorry guys, I'm about to fall into a food coma. Okay, <laughs> we decided to sit up a bit. So <laughs> I'm gonna hold the camera for him. Yeah. All right, what do you wanna share? I was just sharing with Beth about the sermon today and he was talking basically about gratitude, I guess is the more recurring thing that kept coming up. And I was just thinking even throughout the sermon how like for someone, for example, who's just come out of an accident, right? And they have to engage in physical therapy. And they have to basically, you know, let's say the physical therapist tells them, hey, you've got to take 10 steps in this treadmill. And they are like struggling, like struggling to get step one and then two and then they keep getting pushed and there's a a travailing through it to to just get 10 steps in and then we take for granted that we can just i can right now just get up do 10 steps 20 steps 30 whatever i can go do laps around around the pond over there i can do all of these things that are in and of themselves miracles when you think about it the ability to walk the ability of different components and members of your body to be to hear from the brain what they need to do and to do them in conjunction with each other everybody keeping track of what each other is doing it's a miracle it really is a miracle but we take it for granted why because it happens every day <clears throat> again I can do 200 steps so something that you see 200 instances of it you, you normalize it and you, you stop seeing just how miraculous it is. And so it goes for um, our relationships. I see Beth every single day. How easy it is to fall to the default of it's just my wife, right? Versus, hey, God gave me a gift. And God gave me a gift. And, and it's a miracle in and of itself. Our children, just think about this. There was a lot of um, little swimmers trying to get to that egg. And it was Enrique, Sally, Warren, Clara, Wyatt that made it to that egg. One in a trillion chances, if you think about how many didn't make it. Um, the fact that, that all our children have good health, you know, relatively right as, as compared to a lot of people I don't know it just, it just started staring up in me like we just take it for granted because of the frequency of it happening but just because it happens a lot of times doesn't devalue the importance and the miraculous nature of it eight billion people <clears throat> in this planet, every single one of them. Think about it. 
they have a brain and they have all these systems and all these organs and all these unique experiences and all these unique giftings, unique talents, all things they could do. I mean, every single one of them. So just because there's eight billion of them, ah, eh, whatever. No, no, every single one of them. A miracle. It's just, it's just, I guess, intentionally shifting your mind, like the word says, right? In Psalms, that's what the psalmist did all the time. Even when he was naming out everything that was going wrong, he would just end up saying, but the Lord, right? And and he would convince his own soul. He would say, why are you cast down, my soul? Don't you remember what the Lord has done? And then he would start thanking the Lord and and looking at what was good in his life because of the Lord. And then he would end up just full of joy, which doesn't mean the circumstances went away, but that he could transcend those circumstances and say, the, even through all of this, the Lord is good. That wasn't the sermon, but it's it stirred this up. This is a good sermon. It stirred up my thinking in, in, <clears throat> in that area of like, and Thanksgiving has always been like my favorite holiday. Mine too. But, you know, in one sense, yeah. But in the other sense, every day could be Thanksgiving. And not let that, the fact that you're doing it every day, mean that it's less valuable. It's not. It's not. The miracles, just because they happen often and are frequently seen, doesn't make them not be miracles. Doesn't make them not be worthy of contemplating and seeing the goodness of God in them like think about your relationships that way right if every time you especially especially when you're disagreeing with somebody and when there's a little tension and you remind yourself this person in my life it's a miracle that God brought together for some kind of eternal good actually you're going to start seeing this person a different way right oh this person is made in the image of God you're going to start looking at not as the problem that needs to be solved, but as the gift that they are from God. And it'll also help you, remind you, to look at yourself that way because we also forget that we ourselves are also a miracle. Uh, remind that God may, God said, David said, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Like he, he took time to, to just think about that. Like, wow. All of, all of the stuff I talked about earlier, like all the things we are able to do. And there's so many more things that we have the potential of doing if we realize that potential. It's incredible. It's crazy. It's crazy. This reminds me of something. You know how in YouTube there's a, and it's oh, hopefully it's not way too off topic. But there's um, fail videos, a whole category of videos called fail videos. And I used to be into them. But I'll say this, that encourages the, the opposite of what thankfulness and gratitude is. Because there's also this category, category of videos of um, it's either people are awesome or something about just people doing things that are awesome. And if one just shifts their focus from one thing to the other thing I mean it'll definitely help your own attitude our own attitude so there was a short pause there so <laughs> I might have lost my momentum a little bit <laughs> but this whole category of videos is showing people being awesome and you know and sure, some people will choose to, to look at that and get jealous or have envy. But most people, I think, can use that as an opportunity to be inspired and say, look at what we are capable of. And even say, you know, if they can do it, I can do it. Or even if it's not for you, right? You've got this whole other set of strengths that you want to focus on and you should. Um, 
but it inspires you that when people set out to do things and they focus their mind on the good thing, right? Accomplishing something, um, making somebody else's life better or somebody else's day a little better, right? You start focusing in that direction, it, it changes everything. It changes everything. The whole dynamics, your attitude towards life, but also your, your ability to actually do something that affects change, that changes things. Because that's the other thing about negative attitudes. Then you end up um, falling into despair. And it, despair is terrible, even directly linked to health issues. But even if it wasn't directed to health issues, your spirit is just starving, starving. Instead of soaking in the goodness of God by recognizing where God is at work, what good things he's doing, even in the midst of bad things. You're starving your spirit, you're starving your soul from the nourishment that it needs. And you soak in the goodness of God and all the good things he's done and all the good things he has prepared for us in the future that we haven't even experienced yet. And it gives you a sense of excitement about your future, about where God is taking things, regardless of where they are at today. That's transcendent right there. Right. No, I like what you said, that like despair is like horrible and it is it's linked to so many unhealthy like i know it's key to obesity um and you see it even in adults who Mm -hmm. they were children and obese and they went into adulthood and there was something in their lives unfortunately their childhood where the despair was so deep that they couldn't see their way out and I think one of the things um, that I have learned, because I got into a downward spiral of despair, especially when um, when you guys were removed from my life and I was removed from your life, because <clears throat> I didn't know how to do life without being a mom. I didn't know how to do life without loving on you guys because you guys were a part of me. And I felt, I learned about despair and despondency and hopelessness. And because I did, I felt like all of those things. But I had people speaking into my life and I speak into whoever's watching this now that you can make a choice. Like, I was grateful that I had a few people around me or I would go to church and just noticeably people will come up and speak joy, joyful stuff into my life. And it was what gave me hope. And they would say, like, I don't know, but I feel like the Lord's telling me that you just need to be joyful and you need to praise. You need to be thankful. And so I started cha- changing my attitude to a thankfulness and to gratitude. Um <clears throat> in all that I did and how I would start my prayer time in the morning is I would start with thanking God for everything. And I know a few videos back, I was telling you about, you know, choose something every single day before you even put your feet on the ground to thank God for, you know, um, it could be, if you're having such a rough day, it might just be being thankful that you have two feet or two hands or that you can eat food and you can Mm -hmm. drink water on your own Mm -hmm. and nobody has to feed or or anything feeds you a dog that sits beside you while you're crying right like i mean there's always something and i know like some people yeah actually i may even get into this but you can always find something to be thankful for and that's why i encourage you guys um Be thankful. Be thankful for the things that we take for granted. That's being alive. That's being able to breathe without a breathing tube. That's um, you're walking, you're breathing, you're living. And there, and again, I think I say it in every single video, your circumstances don't define you. 
and God has a plan in all this. He has a plan in your guys' lives. He has a plan in my life. He has a plan in our family's life with Hadid that you will be able to meet in person someday. And we have to stay focused on, be focused on God, what Jesus, what he did to send Jesus to this earth for. That he went through, <clears throat> he literally went to hell. <laughs> I was going to say he went through hell and back. He literally did go to hell and mm -hmm. back. And the Holy Spirit is with us always because we chose to live for mm -hmm. Jesus and with him. And, um, yeah, I guess that's it's just making it a point to take every thought captive. If it's as the, something the pastor was saying today was, you know, mm -hmm. make a cognitive um, choice to destroy all those negative thoughts that come in your mind. It could be negative thoughts about yourself or negative thoughts about others. You make a choice, and I think I've described it before. It's almost as if there's like this bubble above your head <clears throat> and this thought comes in. And you know it's a negative one. And I just go up there and I poke it with a needle to pop it. Pop <laughs> And I make it go away. I know other people, like, imagine, like, pushing it away. Or I like to pop it and just make it go away. You can also just say the word Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And the enemy has to flee. Like, he doesn't like Jesus' name. Um, and then replace it. You know, not only just get rid of it, now replace it. So, <clears throat> this one, obviously... Well, okay, let's just say um, this is probably common with youth today. Nobody loves me. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody says, nobody loves me, nobody cares about me, I have no friends. Pop, I'm pop, all pop. Alone, yeah. I am loved by God. He is the creator of all things. That's all that matters. If nobody else on this earth loved you, the most important thing is God, because guess what? You're going to be in eternity with God if you choose to follow him and obey his ways. You're going to be in heaven with him. And so he's the only one that matters that loves you anyways. Loving ourselves, you know, so that's two. God loves me and I love myself. Um, <clears throat> and, and you have two friends. Actually, you have four friends. If you were all alone, you have Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God, and yourself. So, <laughs> anyways, um, we're 18 minutes into this, and I told you I was going to start doing shorter ones because I don't know at what point that you're able to watch these. Um, That's what you get for putting me in front of the camera. <laughs> it was wonderful. Was there any last <laughs> thoughts you long. wanted to share? <laughs> no, it was so good. It was so good. Is there any last thoughts? thoughts that you want to share yeah yeah at the very least do not despair do not despair like when we were in the i was in the military i served for a little bit um but the, part of our training they would say the if you fall into a prisoner of war situation the thing that's going to kill you is losing hope mm. They said you always need to retain that hope that that your teammates, that your country is doing everything they possibly can to get back and, <clears throat> and rescue you. And for us as Christians, even more so, there's no reason for us to lose ultimate hope. I mean, we, you know, our feelings go up and down and whatever, but ultimately our hope is in the Lord. And he, he has never failed anybody. He has never, he's not gonna start with you. Just keep that hope alive. Hope in Jesus. Those who hope in the Lord will never be disappointed. And something, and let one last note too there, is that our life here is so short. And I know it feels like an eternity. I mean, I know that at my age. I'm like 28 years old. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, 
<laughs> but um, I know that like there are times that you feel like the day is so long, the week is so long, the month, and you just want it to go by, and you're like, this, I, I can't, I can't. And um, just want to remind you that, and I don't even know why we're sharing this stuff. This is kind of some deep stuff. I don't know. Maybe somebody needed to hear this today. This time here on earth is so short. <clears throat> God has us here for a reason. There's a purpose. There's a mission, a special mission that he created for each one of us. It's our choice. It's our choice if we lock arms with him and, and we fulfill this mission. We fulfill the destiny that he put before us. And there are going to be times that it's going to feel like crap. And those parts of the missions, those parts of the mission or missions makes us stronger for the next and i just um want to encourage you in that in that <clears throat> if you look back at your life you got over and you got through what felt like mount everest mm -hmm. and then you've got on to another mount everest right and you get over and you get through it and you look back at it and you're like oh my gosh that really wasn't that bad but i made it into such a big deal mm -hmm. that's what your life like if you're in some sort of deep hole or climbing Mount Everest right now, remember, you will get over it. Mm -hmm. You will get out of that hole mm -hmm. and you will move forward. God will give you a peace and then you might come to another one. Um, and I think the, for me, the biggest thing always is like, Lord, did I do something to get myself in there? Did I screw up and take the wrong path? Did I make a mistake? Um, and even if I did, God will always redirect, realign, and he will reach his hand into that yeah. hole and pull us out. Yeah. Or he'll help get us over Mount Everest. Always. Mm -hmm. Because there are some times that we make, we choose and we make these decisions. And we end up having to live with the consequences. And then we learn from it so we don't do it again. Then there are times that, <clears throat> like in the book of, in the Bible, in Job, and with Joseph, um, there were times terrible things happened to us, and it wasn't our choice, and we had no way of getting out of it because God allowed it for a bigger purpose. And um, sometimes we don't know, you know, we look back at it and we question it, we can make up, you know, reasonings. Oh, well, if I did that, and oh, I came into alignment with this, or I was friends with this person, or I married this person, you know, we can like try and make sense of it all day long, but it's not up to us, it's up to God. And regardless if it was us, or if it was the Lord allowing something to happen, because he had a bigger purpose and plan, it will all work out. And I want to say, like, it always works out. No, it will always work out for God's glory. If, here's here's the, the speed bump, if we obey the Lord, listen to him, and rely on him. We don't want to get thrown back into that pit mm -hmm. or climb Mount Everest again. Um, now, if we ignore him and turn from him, <clears throat> we might end up back in the pit again or in Mount Everest, but every single time God's there, he never leaves us. And he's like calling down to us saying, just grab my hand, grab my hand, I'll pull you out of the pit. Um, wow, I'm 23 months into this, but I don't know who <laughs> who needed to hear this. If someone did, I don't know. <laughs> but um, I know to my kids, I love you guys. Mm. I miss you guys so much, and I'm so proud of you. Miracles. You really are. You're my heroes. I know I've put that on social media. You're my heroes. And um, God has a plan. He has a bigger purpose. And man, or woman, either one, or I'm just talking person in general, may try and create an alienation, parent, parental alienation between you and between me. But God will redeem it, and it won't stay forever. There's no way. There's no way. Because God loves you guys so much. He loves me so much, and he wants us to be together. He does. So I know he'll reunite us. And I know that you'll be able to meet this wonderful man, your stepfather. So I love you guys. I miss you. Father God, I just ask that you please bless Warren and Clara. Bless Wyatt. 
In the name of Jesus, Lord. And Lord, I thank you that you will redeem all things and you'll make everything new and glorious someday. Father, I pray that it happens soon. And Lord, most importantly, may your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you, Father God. Yeah, see you nice soon. In your name, amen. I love you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take Bye. Take care.